just to watch our fans like just rush to get to their spots. It was uh, it was a surreal surreal feeling. Um, I've been to another place where it's been like that, but we haven't had that yet. And um, so I first off want to thank our fans for showing up um, in the sun and the heat. They showed up, it was 90 minutes, I believe. It was 90 minutes before the game and they were waiting to sit there. They waited an hour and a half until the games even started. And then they sat through, um, how long was that game? Somebody help me, three and a half almost, three and a half. So our fans, they sat there for five hours. Um, so I was just super thankful uh, to them. I thought Dom gave us a great start. Um, he went four shutout to start and then give them a lot of credit. They started putting balls in play. Um, with two strikes, they just flicked balls, hit it really, quite frankly, where we weren't. And um, that's a really good team. They're champions for a reason. So, um, but I thought Don, he got us a lot of big outs. I thought Cam O'Brien, the job that he did to come in in the fifth was uh, crucial, um, where we were able to minimize. I thought Evan Byer has got us two outs, and obviously Hogan was fantastic, got us 10 outs. And they had their chances, give them a lot of credit. They put a lot of pressure on us. But I give our guys credit. Um, we bent, but we didn't break. So um, they did score in two innings, but they didn't score in the other seven. And I thought that was the difference in the game. Nick, uh, Michael Epps of Fox 86. Was there a little nail biting there? I mean, it was close there. It was tight. And does that kind of give a wake up call to the guys? Like, at this point, every single team is going to be good. Um, you know, we've been, you guys have watched this play. How many times have we been in that same game? I just feel like we've been there so many times. Um, I don't buy my nails. My wife's proud. Um, Reeves, do you still buy yours? Are you good? Yeah. All right, Reeves stopped buying. So no one, I know Kristen doesn't buy her nails, so no one in our family buys her nails. But was it, man, intense? And every play and every inch mattered? Absolutely. But to our point the other day, we've been in those games um, for 15 weeks. So this is the 16th week of it. So I, I thought our guys absolutely responded. You know, I thought a big um, moment in the game was in the fifth. They score five, and then we immediately score two, and I thought that was the difference in the game. They immediately score five, and we answer back with two. I thought that was big. Right there. Ethan Grant, Scott's coverage. So Devin Burks, he's had his ups and downs all year, but just le leaving off right where he left off last year in the regional, can you just talk about how he played today? The guy is just clutch. He had four key blocks, kept the game in front the entire time. And every one of those blocks saved us a base, which ultimately saved us a run. So I thought his leadership was fantastic. Um, um, his verbal and nonverbal behind the plate is absolutely crucial. And there's a reason why we bat him in a three hole. You know, I think you can look at stats and other things, but that guy is as tough and he's as clutch as anybody in our program. So um, he was five for five today, quality at bats. Um, it was five for five. Every at bat, he did something positive for Kentucky. So um, I thought that was good. And then, um, you know, I thought the production up and down our lineup was crucial. I talked about our pitching, I mentioned some of our defense, but um, we had seven different guys that had an RBI, seven. And if you look at what our seven, eight, and nine guys did, they scored five of our 10 runs between those guys. So I think anytime you have that kind of production up and down the lineup, um, it obviously makes us hard to beat. And uh, we were able to do it all. We hit bunts, bombs, Ran the bases, stolen bases, got thrown out a couple times being aggressive, but we were on the full on attack. Uh, we drew walks, we got hit by pitches, and uh, we hit on a lot of, a lot of cylinders um, offensively. Yeah, far left. Michael Presley, NCAA.com. Today starts a journey for a lot of teams who are hoping it goes for two or three weeks and ends up in the mall. When you had a program that's had a lot of success but has never been there, can you talk about the hunger of the people who were coming in those stands 90 minutes before? Your hunger, your players' hunger to get to a place this place has been. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of work, a lot of ups and downs. I've learned a lot as a coach. I haven't been perfect. Um, but the one thing I will say is that as our program has continued to try to climb and make adjustments and get better, our fans have done the same thing. And you can just see year after year, you can just see it building from the end of 22 to last year to this year. And I want to compliment this team. And you guys have heard me say this a lot. They are so good at moving on to the next thing. Like we talk all the time. You've heard us say about this win will expire at midnight and it will. They will move, they move on immediately. And that's how 
you know, last, this year we look up and at one point we're 15 and one in the league. It's like, it's incredible. How are you able to do that? And if I told our team, hey, we better go 15 and one at the beginning of the year, they'd be like, coach, you're crazy. <laughs> but they've literally, literally have taken each game and they move on and they say next, and it's a new day, win or lose, next, 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 next. And ultimately, it's a lot like building a house. You really have to do it, a brick house. You do have to do it one brick at a time. And you gotta keep laying them. I and mean, one one gets off, you gotta reset it and uh, get it going and you just keep going. And then by the time you look up and you do that enough times for a long enough period of time, after a while you look up and you're like, wow, look at this, we, we built a mansion. But you can only do it one brick at a time. And that's what we've attempted to do. Burt Green, GB1 Baseball. Uh, Coach, you talked about the fifth inning. And I think going into that inning, Domino only gave it up one hit. And I think we all agree he pitched better than the stat line. They had three three infield base hits and a bloop that inning. Scored five runs. How do you keep the guys from getting frustrated or yourself from getting frustrated when teams are doing those frustrating things to you that you've been doing to them all season long? Yeah, um, that's where it's our ability to move on. I thought it helped, you know. Because I, I did not think Dom got frustrated. I thought he just kept making his pitch, and it was like, boom, they put the ball in play, give him credit, boom, they put it in play. But I thought he held, I thought he held true to who he was. He didn't get frustrated. And um, you're right, that's us at our best, where we're putting balls in play and creating pressure and, and making plays. Um, so I thought he did that, and I thought Cam, he settled that game too. Cam O'Brien, he did what he's done all year. He's been our fireman every time he gets to a spot where we need to bring in a fireman, boom, and it gets hairy, he's right there. And um, um, I thought they held it together. I, I, I also, again, like how we responded right after. You know, to score two immediately, I thought that was crucial. Yeah. yeah John Hale. Yeah. Nick, obviously when you're up eight, uh, eight nothing, it looks like maybe you're gonna be able to make it out there without using any of your top relievers. You have to do what you have to do to win the game, yes. but how do you feel about the pitching situation the rest of the weekend? Yeah, you know, if, um, you, if you asked me before the game, how was it gonna go? It was gonna go Dom to Hogan. And we used Cam in between there, and uh, we used Evan, who got us obviously two outs. And you could see Hogan was starting to run on fumes there at the end. So I even think those two outs by Evan Byers was big, you know? So, but that was the plan, to go right to Dom, right to Hogan. So uh, would it have been nice up eight nothing to try to put the game away. Yes, but that's a good team. That's a good team. And it was going to be hard to put them away. And if you look at that team, how many times they scored eight or more runs in their last 15 games, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So I knew deep down that they were going to make their run in their push. Um, and uh, it, it played out the way we wanted with Hogan. John Clay. Nick, kind of follow up on Mike's question. Obviously, as a number two overall seed, you're very capable of getting where you want to go. But how do you keep the guys loose and concentrate on the on the goal, but also have fun and play loose? Yeah. Um, they've actually done that all year. And there's a couple times where I got to be honest, John, like I'm, I'm looking down and I'm like, do I want to look down and see what they're doing? I'm like, they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I really don't have to really coach that as much with this group because, uh, they're keeping it loose. Today I saw the cap stack. I don't know if you saw that. This was new, but they mixed in camo. Did you guys catch that? It was like regular cap, then a camo cap, then a regular cap, then a camo. And like they brought the camo. I saw them sitting on the bench. I'm like, I, early in the game, I'm like, I bet that's for the cap stack. <laughs> Whenever we do that. Like, so they're thinking ahead. I saw Jackson Novi today. John, I, I really look, I'm walking down and dugout, I'm getting ready to coach, and I was like, Jackson Novi have full catchers gear on. <laughs> left handed pitcher. <laughs> I'm like, all right, they're loose. <laughs> like, they're loose. Um, so we need to keep playing that way. But it all starts. They can only be loose if they compete first. And they know that. It starts. That is the building block of anything we do. You have to compete at the highest level. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, Jeff. Coach, expanding on Dom, what kind of went in that decision for him to start today? Um, well, our starters, you guys know this, those that have followed our program closely, you've been there, I think, about every game. Um, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of our starters. They have thrown a bulk of innings. And when we're at our best, they take us deep into the game. Well, they've done that. So therefore, they've thrown a good bit. And um, so we chose to not throw Dom as much in the SEC tournament. If you remember, we threw him for maybe an inning to get out of there. And he was kind of 
not beat up, but it's just there's some things that going on. So we really gave him some good rest. And I give Coach Rosell credit. Him and Don worked uh, worked this this past week and actually moved Don on the rubber some. And I thought that adjustment really helped, you know. And that's the thing. I just compliment our guys, James. We tried like honestly thirty different things with him. 30 different things to get him these different feels. And he would put a ball over here, and you got to hit the ball over there. Then I put a ball on a tee over here and said, okay, try your hands right here. Okay, put your elbows together. Spread your feet out. Spread out. Get your hip in there a little more. Try that. And it's like back and forth. And it's like, all right, do circles. Okay, angle your bat this way, James. Try that. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, grab this stick right here, this big PVC pipe. Swing that thing. Okay, you hear the swoosh? Okay, try that. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, I'm going to hold your hip right here. And like you're going to swing. And it was like, it was a marathon. But to his credit, he just wanted to be coached, and he wanted to figure it out. The same thing with Dom. I give him a lot of credit. He made an adjustment on the rubber, and it paid big dividends. Um, so I appreciate it about our team. They're always trying to get better, all of them. Even the guys on the bench are finding ways to get in there. And um, we have good players that didn't get a chance to get in, but um, they'll be ready when their time's called. But they work. Nick, what, what's the difference in mentality, if, if any, from the position you were in last season and had to find out of and taking care of the first game this season. Game two has been our uh, deal. As you, in 17, we won the first game, lost the second one. In 23, won the first one, lose the second one. So um, we've got to be able to weigh, you know, to win a regional, you know this, you can win it in three games or you got to do it in five. So um, we haven't done, in those two years, we have not won the second game. That has been our biggest challenge. So uh, now we have Poos and Memo both available, rested on good rest, to win this, try to win the second game against a really good team. Um, so, um, guys, this has been a, a really cool uh, five days. Really cool five days. Um, we had our selection show with our number two national seed. Uh, we get done, and uh, this little dude right here stands up in front of our team and says he was going to get baptized on Thursday and invited our team. And yesterday at my house. It was optional. We had the whole team there, and uh, Reeves got baptized. And then uh, we came out today, and we win. It's like whew, pretty good five days. Number two national seed. Your son gets baptized, and you win game one. It's like whew, praise the Lord. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Staying on the same track with that. Can you just talk about how cool it's been to experience experience this with your son all year, him being in the dugout and being next to you the whole time? Yeah, uh, we're a family. And uh, those of you that followed us, um, when Kristen and I uh, took the job here, you know, Kristen is as bright as person as I've ever met. Um, she has two degrees. Um, and she just basically, we decided that this was going to be our team and we're going to do this together. So we really do have a family. Um, and Kristen and Reeves, they're there all the time. Um, Kristen pours her heart and soul into this. Um, our fans, all the families, Reeves does the same thing. Um, it's not hard to be a coach's uh, wife, and it's not hard to be a coach's son, but we do it the best way we know how. And uh, the only way I know to do it is to do it together as a family. And uh, you really, our team is the same exact way. They're just a group of guys that love each other. They want to do everything they can to help Kentucky win. And uh, it's been a great group. And um, our fans have noticed that. Our fans have noticed their unselfishness and um, their, the way they root and pull for each other. It's been fun. but. Uh, yeah, I, I can't do what I do without my wife and my son because uh, they are the most important thing in my life. And uh, But they're in it with us. And my wife's competitive, and so is Reeves now. He'll tell me, Dad, what happened to this? <laughs> He'll keep me straight. They keep me straight. Reeves, what advice would you give for your dad? <laughs> I don't really know. How do you want us to practice? Uh everything that you've been doing the last few years. Yeah, keep doing Last it. year, 17, just keep doing the same thing over and over again. And if, it, if that doesn't go right with some guys, work with them and make it better. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coach, I've got a question for you. You start out first inning, you guys are stealing bases, you know, you're up a bunch of runs, you're stealing bases. I think I know the answer to this, but does that aggressiveness, is that ever going to be pulled back a little bit? Are there situations where you, you wouldn't do that? Um, we're at our best when we attack, and uh, we force people to uh, make plays and make mistakes. And, 
you know, there's times where we made two outs on the bases today, but we also forced them to make three errors, right? Even in the first inning, think about this. We scored a run in the first inning without a hit. Without a hit. How do we do it? We did it with a walk, a stolen base. They tried to pick, made an error. Boom, there's your run. We never got a hit. The ball never left the infield, right? I mean, to get to third base, like we didn't do it. So um, that's us at our best. And we just feel like if you do that to 18 to 24 year olds over time, they're gonna make mistakes. And, um, you know, even I thought Grant did a great job. He got thrown out third, there was one out, that's the time to do it. There are 12 ways you can score from third base that you can't from second. And especially with one out, that's the time to do it. Guy made a perfect throw, tip your cap, just a little bit past the back. So what, next play, move on. But that's us at our best when we force our opponent. So. Um, is there a time when we'll back off? I don't know. I don't know. I just love when we play that way, and I think it totally affects our opponents. John from Grand Kentucky Colonel. Um, can you talk about what Hogan has meant? He mentioned the family aspect of the team. Can you talk about what he's meant to the team, both the player and the pitcher, all season long? Yeah, I told him this. Um, we do something that I um, – Ty Crittenberger is one of our seniors, and um, he is uh, as good as leaders we have. And he hasn't played much. He's waiting for his opportunities. And when he does, he'll take advantage of it, and he'll do great. Um, but we did a deal um, not too long ago where we talked about like, what makes our team great. Like, what is it? And Ty Crittenberger stands in the back right-hand corner, and um, actually where Shelby Jean's sitting. And, um, he said, he raised his hand, he says, what we value makes us different. And what we value on the pitching and defense side is quality pitches, okay? Um, and every, after every game, our standard is to have 80% quality pitches. So the following day, Coach Roselle, he's totaling up his chart right now. I know exactly what he's doing. Um, he's gonna send me a text and we'll see where we were at with our quality pitches. And before the, um, game tomorrow, we'll talk about the quality pitches. And whenever Hoagie meets that standard, and most of the time he does, okay? And I say, all right, Robert Hogan, 84%. The team goes crazy for the guy. They love him. And I mentioned that to him even, might have been yesterday at practice, I said, I love the way the team loves you, Hoagie. And we did another exercise where I said, um, it was actually after one of our chapels, they were talking about serving and how people are at their best when they serve. And I said, hey, who, who serves you guys? Like who is one of those guys that you could ask, hey, this guy will do anything for me, okay? There was a story about the people sitting, holding the, um, their friend and putting them down through the roof, okay, to go see Jesus or whatever, because there was just people everywhere. And if I, hey, who, who would do anything for you? And the team, immediately, Hoagie, he'll do anything for me. He's like one of those guys that they just, he will serve them. He'll do anything for them. And it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. So they, they love him. They love each other. But boy, do they love that guy. They love that guy. A couple more. Uh, coach, um, you know, how, how good is it for you as a coach to see, you know, as a team, you guys have had, you know, it seems like ups and downs, comebacks, get big leads, everything. It's been all over the place this year, right? It's yeah. exciting to watch. But, you know, coming in now as a favorite, as a top seed, and seeing your team kind of take a hit and, and respond and not kind of feel the pressure, from, from a coach's perspective, how much was that like, all right, we're, we're in a really good mental place here. It's not just, you know, loose and, and kind of normal, but, you know, they're focused and we can kind of take the pressure. Yeah, it makes you proud as a coach. And I, I think you guys know this. We talk about all – this all the time, but um, when your team can have experiences, they can draw from those experiences, right? Like we talk about um, this, you've maybe heard me say this all the time, as parents, Kristen and I do not want to give Reeves things. We want to give him experiences because that's what shapes and impacts them, right? That's why that Friday um, against uh, Vanderbilt when we won the SEC, that was an experience they will never forget. And every time our team has been in those games and they've had those experiences right i feel like we've played this game i don't know how many times right so over time you just get used to having to make a pitch you get used to um having to make a play having to make have, having a bat all those things matter so every time you have that experience um it helps you 
And you know, it's much like um, uh, when you get cut and you get a scab, right? And then it's like your skin gets scarred and then you get tougher and your skin gets tougher and tougher and you just keep getting cut and your skin is just like, after a while, it's just like, just so hard to just penetrate it. It's like you are scarred up, like, man. And our team has been through a lot. They've been through a lot. And I feel like we've played that game right there. I don't know how many times. Um, whether it's a 4-2 game or it's a 10-8 game, we've played it. And the guys have experienced that. So um, I'll be pretty upset if they hit the panic button, right? Like, then I don't, I don't think they did. I think they just kept going along and just kept playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, make the pitch, make the pitch, play the game, play the game. And um, worked out good. One last one. Anybody? Thank you all for being here. Yes, thank you.